And uh, during that time, we'll have a guest, Anatoly Ropotov, who will give you some good insights. Let's see if we could come, if some more people could come from there, or they will hear voices. Or maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll just start and we'll see if more people will come. So, yeah, my name is Anatoly and I'm CEO of Game Insight Europe. We are a game development and game publisher company. It's actually huge. We've got 160 million users. We've got over 800 developers right now in house, 17 studios, and so many platforms covered with our games from iOS, iPhone, iPad, to Amazon App Stores, to Google Play, to Korean App Stores, Facebook, and even Japanese uh, social networks where some of our titles are number one top grossing. So I'm, going, I'm not going to talk much about what our company does. We make great games. We make games in uh, social city building genres, uh, 3D action games like the upcoming Tank Domination, uh, a new 3D runner game, uh, hidden object games, MMORPG games, and we're actually doing all that in-house with our teams in Russia and Eastern Europe. So to, I'm not going to talk much about the company, I'm just going to, talk, uh, to share a lot of knowledge and kind of seven steps to make sure that your games and your products could grow. That takes a while and you have to put a lot of effort into that. Just kind of my quick background if you want to catch up later. Uh, I started as a developer over 10 years ago making games and making online games and in Flash and in C uh, for Xbox. And as I moved up, I became a head of games division. I had multiple teams making games. And then I moved to publishing. So I went all from developer to being a publisher and now back to both studios that self-publishes titles through Game Insight. Uh, few games that my studio in Riga is making, we're actually almost 50 people right now. These are a few games that we made. My Country, My Country 2020, and Rule the Kingdom. So in 2009, I came back from Germany, where I was executive vice president of products for a big games holding, to make a game of my dreams. It was a city-building game called Super City, and we released it in 2009 on Facebook, Vkontakte, and a couple other smaller social networks. And within the first month, we gained one million players. Uh, this was the very, very first city building game out there. No, there was no Zynga, no Cityville, no other games. And that led to more games in this genre. Basically, we have created this genre in social networks and on mobile devices as well. So players could come to the game, start building things, and keep going and return even after half a year to build even greater uh, cities, even greater countries. Uh, why am I talking about that? Well, my games have been number one games on, in top grossing US on both Android with over $300,000 grossed in the first two weeks on iOS and on many other platforms, including uh, social networks in Korea and other countries. So this is my latest game, just if you want to uh, download that, you could just open App Store or Google Play and come into more platforms as well. Uh, this is a futuristic city builder. So the seven things that I want to talk about is uh, how do you make a great game or a great product? First of all, you focus on wow factor and fun. So the first thing that people and players uh, look for is instant gratification. The first the first time, once you open an application, once your players open the application, they want to get wowed. Uh, they want to see their spectacular graphic, some kind of minimalist gameplay, which is just so awesome. Or they just want to have fun. So focus on that. And uh, all other tips that I'm going to make about social by design, about all the different retention and analytic features, don't make sense if you don't have a great product. So once you actually made a game, make sure that you focus on both first session, that's the first impression, like great tutorial, super easy to complete, make sure that 100% of players could com complete that. But also on the second session, what happens if your players come back after five days? They totally forgot how to play, they need hints, they need quests, they need clues how to continue playing. 
Also, how do you get back those players? Don't forget to send uh, things like push notifications or local notifications. Hey, you haven't played for a while. Get back to the game. And one really important thing that I haven't seen mentioned by anyone here, except one very special team, is called persistence. What is persistence? Uh, so our games are made to be persistent. You could come back to the game a year later, and there will be the same city that you have built, and 100 new buildings that you could build, 100 new quests. So your game needs to live. You need to have a central place to come back and always uh, really see all the things that you have actually built or achieved. So without that, a lot of games actually uh, like kind of lose their charm for a while. You will play a small arcade game for a few weeks, but after those few weeks you will go and download the new arcade game and the new arcade game and will keep moving. The games that we create are persistent. And this is a thing that I will explain a little bit uh, later as well. Uh, the, second th the second point I want to make is that uh, games nowadays need to be social by design. What's social? It's not that button share with your friends uh, the stupid achievement. It's the thing that once you come into the game, it needs to say, hey, here are all of your friends. These friends are better than you. They are highly ranked. They play this game for 100 times a day. And hey, start playing with them. Start challenging them. So that's what social by design means. You need to have a list of your friends on the very first screen of your game. You need to have a way to visit their achievements. You need to, to have a way to challenge them. And there are different types of games, like uh, puzzle games, where you actually compete on a weekly basis or um, on a different basis against scores of your friends. But there are some games, like city building games, where you actually don't compete, you actually exchange, trade, and cooperate. So different kind of social by design games uh, have different emotions. Uh, in competition, it's, it's anger and it's triumph if you win. In cooperation, it's just the fun of sharing with your friends, not on social wall somewhere, but actually through the game mechanics. So what's super important in social by design games is the viral loop. Uh, I'll share those slides, but if you go to SlideShare and uh, enter something like metrics for social games, you will see really cool slides like that. Actually, not like that. But what social by design means uh, is that you are able to start playing from a single platform and continue on any other platform as well. And I will cover that in cross-platform uh, slides as well. So it's so easy to make a social game right now. You just grab Facebook SDK or a Game Center SDK and just make the first screen showing your friends very prominently. Here is your friend, he's number one. It's super important because without social context, it's much harder to get back to the game. You want to beat your friends, you want uh, to get notifications from friends that they beat you. Uh, it's much better for you to have social things like that. Uh, how do you launch a game? How do you get noticed? Well, sometimes people say, well, I sent 20 announcements to different blogs and nothing happened. It's much harder than that. Uh, what's marketing? It's acquisition of traffic, it's cross-promotion, it's uh, th those PR pieces, it's talking with Apple and Google Play to make sure that your game gets featured if it's cool enough, if it has cool features, if it complies with platform standards. But the best way to go, if you're just starting, is just to go and get a publisher. You'll discover a lot of insight from these guys who have launched games to tens of millions of players. They will share a lot of tips and tricks on how to make your games better and uh, how to make sure that your games actually monetize. The second part is a su sustainable growth. So once you have launched the game, you will see that after a few months you get zero downloads. Nobody else cares about your game. Uh, hey, what's up? Why is it happening? Well, it, it happens because you either don't have a viral loop, so players stop inviting other players, players stop talking about this game, or, well, the game is just tired. How do you prevent that? You have to still keep rolling the marketing. You have to still have cross promos that like publisher could uh, provide you. And you have to update the game very often. Uh, I'll show you a few slides that are super important. How do you measure conversion of players from clicks? Uh, and how do you measure growth? So 
this is a super important slide that a lot of people just don't care about. Uh, it's, uh, it's super important for both apps and games. So once you release an app, uh, people go to App Store and find it somehow. Uh, well, how does they find it? E either, it's a, either you just sent out a press release and they start searching for that, or you have started a marketing campaign, so you start to attract users to your application. So how do those App Store views, App Store page views, uh, convert to downloads? If you have crappy screenshots, if you have crappy icon, uh, people might not download that. If you don't localize it to many languages, if you just never localize and have really crappy English, people wouldn't download that. So make sure those things are perfect first. If you don't have those, people wouldn't even download and wouldn't even launch your application. So what happens when people launch the game first? Uh, you have no idea whether it's a complete tutorial or not. And I'm Somebody just launched our game. Uh, uh, so, and what happens uh, once they launch the game? Uh, they start completing the tutorial. Uh, how do you know whether they have complete tutorial or not? Uh, you need analytic systems, and I'm going to talk about that. Uh, so make sure that at least 80% of players will complete your tutorial. Uh, sometimes you will see worse numbers. Why does it happen? You might have a bug on a device that you haven't tested. Also, if you have analytic systems, you will see that, uh, let's say, players on uh, widescreen Androids have issues with reaching some buttons so they don't see some buttons. And once you have it in place, you will be able to see that. So once all the tutorial completions are fine, you have to care about retention. Well, what's retention? What's the reason for your players to come back after they have completed the tutorial? Is the game fun? Does it ask you to come back? Uh, did you receive a notification from friends, which is a challenge? Why is it coming back? So this is, uh, I think that a lot of presentations, you, you could find a lot of presentation on just general game mechanics and gameplay. Why is the players coming back? The game has to be fun. Uh, and then, obviously, it's paying users. How do you convert players from non-paying users to paying ones? Well, this is something that we have mastered. Uh, the core gameplay mechanic needs to limit players in certain ways. Uh, needs to prevent them from going too fast and advance too fast. So sometimes games use energy, sometimes games don't give as much game dollars or virtual currency that players could advance. So you have to have the system in place if you want to really earn money from games. And I could talk about this later. One cool thing here is monitor per marketing channel. This is a small little secret that not a lot of people know. So let's say you have launched a marketing campaign to acquire 1,000 users. And all those users came into your application, launched that, but didn't complete the tutorial. Why is this happening? Well, it turns out there are different traffic sources. Let's say a company in China that just sends random clicks to App Store and people download that. and uh, people don't play, you have no idea what's happening. Make sure that you work with good companies like Facebook, which does great mobile app installs, uh, where they really target those users. You, you really get real users, not some crappy clicks from China or something like that. Uh, yeah, so talking about measuring and analytics. Uh, the first time you launch your application, you need to know whether people are actually coming back to your game or your app. How is it called? It's called 137-day retention, uh, and you could measure that with any of the tools out there uh, that I will show in the next slide. You have to measure all those sign-up flows. So let's say your app or game has a button connect with Facebook, and some of the developers have shown that. Uh, you need to know how many users actually have clicked on connect with Facebook and managed to connect. There are actually a lot of Facebook errors out there that could be present in your application. Uh, you might be acquiring traffic from countries like Russia where Facebook is not very common, so people don't click connect with Facebook and they just close the application. And three very important letters, daily active users and monthly active users. So every day you have to measure those, you have to see them in the dashboard, and you need to know whether your game is growing, are your players still coming back, or you're losing those players. So if you don't know something, don't assume do A and B testing. What, what that means is you could launch a special test, let's say, is this button green or blue? You roll out the version of your application, and you might assume that the green would work better. 
you, you might never know. You just go on, roll out, test if it works or not, and make sure that color performs better than the other color. Let's say uh, blue button with Facebook converts at 80% and green one converts at 50%. So, uh, yeah, and all those metrics that you collect, all those numbers, all those crazy charts, you must, they must be actionable. What does it mean? You might collect a lot of numbers, but you will never take any action from that. Uh, let's say uh, you, are, you have plugged hundreds of analytical systems, but you, uh, you, you watch these numbers and you never react. You, you see that your user base is falling, but like, you just like, eh, well, it's fallen. So if it's fallen, figure out what's wrong. Look at your first day retention rate, look at tutorial completions, see if you need more localization, see if you need more marketing. So there are a lot of free tools, a lot of paid tools that let you plug in the analytical systems into your app from first day and figure out what's actually wrong with your app. Sh uh, they will show uh, which parts of the game are the hardest ones, where the players are churning, means they stop returning to your game. So at Game Insight we have both in-house analytical systems and we use also third-party systems to measure certain things. I heard a lot of people saying ads. Well, <clears throat> you can't earn a lot of money with ads unless you have an audience of, let's say, one million daily active users. At that point, you will start earning thousands of dollars. But before you have one million daily active users, you won't be earning much from ads. All of our games, well, they don't have ads. We monetize, uh, all of our games are free, and we monetize with in-apps. So basically, you are able to purchase either virtual currency or premium packs or, ver or various things, but not subscriptions also. I've heard some people saying, well, you need to do subscriptions. That thing, it's very niche. It's, it, it, it's, it's for a very hardcore, small user base. It doesn't work that well. So what's... Uh, what are the expectations of profits from the games? Let's say a puzzle game. So puzzle games typically need to have tens of millions of players to actually start earning significant amount of money. Unless it's a super cross-platform game that, is, that is, exists on mobile, on Facebook, on iPads, and it has a few million players, it, it's, it won't be earning much money. And I'm talking that it will be earning less than $100,000 a month. If it's a hardcore MMORPG game, like I'm showing here, this, this is one of our games, it has huge average revenue per user, but it's less accessible, meaning, like, let's say, a uh, female over 30 wouldn't play that game because it's too hard for them. So this is super accessible and super viral. This is less accessible, but th the players in this game play, uh, play and pay 10 times more than a super casual game. Why is that? Well, hardcore players, male players, uh, would pay much more to, to upgrade their character, to buy more virtual currency. And if it's an MMO, if it's a persistent game, uh, they will come back every month and will keep paying. So if you're making just a small game and you're saying, well, you could only spend $5 in my game buying all the coins out there, don't expect much. Uh, you, your game should earn something like $50 on average from a paying user per month. Don't be shy. Don't be shy to put price points like that. Like, in our games, in City Builder games, you could go in and buy virtual currency worth $100. Uh, and that wouldn't let players complete the entire game, because there is so much things to buy. We're developing those games for many years, and with every update, there is more and more and more stuff. So if you want to build a huge, enormous city, this will cost you more than a few hundred do dollars. But in our games, you could get all those items for free as well. It just takes time. So basically, once you click and collect money, you could get random items, uh, and it just takes time. If you will keep playing for a few months, you will eventually get the same uh, CD and the same cool features as those people who have instantly played $200 to catch up. Basically, you're just buying time with your money. You could play for two months, so you could just get into the game, pay $200, and get all the stuff instantly in the game. And let your players do that. That's how games monetize nowadays. Uh, so a really big trend, a really cool thing out there is cross-platform. So what's cross-platform? 
There are actually two approaches here. You could either release your game on multiple platforms and all of them are standalone. Let's say Angry Birds. You could start playing on one platform, you're level 36, you could start playing on another platform, you start from scratch. And that's okay. You just have multiple uh, versions of your game for different devices. And what's cross-platform? Cross-platform means that once you uh, launch the game and press, let's say, connect with Facebook, you start off from the same point on another platform. And it's super important to have that, because if, if you want to be sure that your players will come in back after a year, let them press connect with Facebook and continue from level 286. This is super important. So how do you make games go cross-platform? There are right technologies like Unity 3D, that lets you develop games for both PC, mobile, browsers, uh, and it will play anywhere. Flash is catching up. You could actually deploy Flash nowadays on mobile, uh, as well as the browser where it has 100% penetration. And some other technologies like Marmalade and some native code could run in browsers as well. So if your game is cross-platform, it's easier to get noticed. Uh, why is it easier? Your game is in all the stores. If your friend plays on iPhone and uh, you, you've got an Android, you, you will go to a store and you will be able to downlo download that game. If you don't have an Android version, we call that viral loop breaks. So let's say your friends have shared on Facebook they're playing this cool game. You click on the link and it doesn't lead you to App Store. You couldn't download the game. Uh, it's not in Google Play, it's not on Windows. So you, you need to be sure that your game is on every platform if you want to go big, if you want to grow to tens millions of players, if you want to make sure that your game keeps growing. Because more and more players play at the same time on Facebook and on mobile as well. So the hard thing here is to update your game at the same time for all platforms. If you have a technology like Unity 3D, it's easy to deploy to all platforms, it's easy to submit uh, to App Store, but you still have to wait seven days at App Store, it's instant at Google Play, you don't know how, how long it will take with Windows. So those are some problems that you're going to experience. So what's our experience with cross-platform? Uh, this was just last week. We have announced 2 million players on Windows 8 platforms. And we have my country launched, I think, like three or four months ago. And it reached 1 million players on Windows Phone, which says that Windows Phone is finally a super viable platform. You could actually launch a game and get millions of players there. And it, it keeps growing. What's cool about Windows Phone as well is that well, Unity is running this contest, bring your game to phones and you will get extra exposure and will win some prizes. Plus, it's super easy to deploy with Unity, so if you're using Unity, try deploying to Windows Phone as well, which is a kind of emerging and growing platform. So, reaching 10 million users is not like a marathon. Uh, you have launched a game and in a few days you have 10 million users. It's a sprint. You will run months after months, uh, from platform to platform, uh, localize the game to more languages. Uh, you will update the game at least twice a month, so your players will come in back, uh, will be coming back for more and more content. Uh, if you want to get great support, if you feel like you're not running marathons for the first time, well, again, get a publisher. He will help you a lot uh, to run months and months and to improve your game up to such stage that it will start reaching uh, tens of millions of users. There are so many platforms ahead, again, like Windows Phone is new, and more pla platforms might be coming out soon. There are so many countries out there, and we have, we have localized our games to Japanese, Korean, and with great success, uh, breaking number one top grossing spots in different social networks and, and different careers across Asia as well. And, well, basically that's the way to reach 10 million plus users. It's actually a lot of effort. You have to think about all those things if you want to go big, if you want to uh, conquer the whole globe. So just talking about what marathon is, that what marathon is. Uh, see, uh, this is a game that we have released in uh, January of 2000, January of 2012. So it's been almost two years now that the game is in top grossing, tw top 20 grossing spots in the United States. Uh, after a year, uh, after almost two years, so that's 18 months top 20 top grossing game in the U.S. And that happens uh, because we update this game every month at least twice. We 
roll out new content, we localize the game to more languages, we launch in more countries. And as you could see here, we've got 1.8 million likes for this game on its uh, page on Facebook. So it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time to improve your game, to roll out more content. There are actually companies in Lithuania right here, like, like Outlander Studios, that partner with us. So we have published a game called Battle Towers. We have helped the team to improve the game significantly and to reach over one million players at this moment on Android alone. We hope this game will come out soon on more platforms and this uh, cool Lithuanian studio will be able to grow to even more million players. So I won't take much time I know that all of you are tired after this intense event of coding over the weekend. So if you have any questions, you could catch me up later. And well, this is a shameless plug. We're hiring in Riga, so if there is anyone from Riga or anyone would like to come to Riga, just ping us and drop us an email. So I hope this was useful and thank you guys. Thank you, Anatoly. Thanks. I, I'm sure that all of you would say that it was interesting speech, right? Yeah, and maybe you have some questions. Okay, I will just share the microphone. Hello, Anatoly. Can we speak English or Russian? What's the better way? Yeah, let's speak English so everyone will get it. Okay, Anatoly, uh, what's the difference when you come and offering us publishing services on some self-publishing things? You're offering only uh, some kind of traffic, what you will push to the, uh, your, you know, our applications to, just to have more users? So the question is, what do we offer that self-publishing doesn't offer? You could go to the site publishing.gameinside.com and learn more, but overall, it's a lot of expertise in uh, those persistent things, like how do you actually grow RPU in your products? How do you make sure that your players will uh, spend more? Uh, also, the cross-promotion power, the, just the general promotion power, are uh, super important things. We've got a whole dedicated team of over 30 producers in Moscow that spend full time looking at new games, improving those games, sending feedback and seeing what works in, what, in different kinds of games, and helping external teams to actually push and move forward. So, depending on the game, send, so you could submit it through publishing uh, website. You will be able to learn more and our guys will provide more information on that. It's uh, not a question, but just an observation. A couple of days ago, I was in Ilkas from Supercell, uh, the CEO presentation, and uh, he told that they chose a strategy just to go for iOS. And they are quite happy with the results, I guess. So this uh, many platforms, uh, maybe it's not necessary if you, I don't know, invest a lot in marketing or did you try like going with some games for a single platform and are really results worse? Okay, not that it's difficult with Unity. But you could push any game. Uh, if you focus really hard, you could make a game work big time on a single platform. So what Supercell does well, they're actually quite small and agile with those small teams. So they really focus on a couple titles and they push them. That's enough for them. Because the price of the failure is kind of high. As you know, like Zynga was pushing out small crappy games and everyone was saying, like, hey, that's bad. So for Supercell, it's really cool to push just a couple of really cool titles. Uh, what we have is we've got those uh, 800 people that uh, uh, deliver great games and we could experiment with different gameplay mechanics and try them on different platforms. What I would tell you is, is that if something doesn't work on one platform or in one country, might work very well in a different country on another platform. And once you get traction on that other country, other countries will start catching up and you will have more leverage. So absolutely, you could achieve uh, things on iOS only. And we've got some iOS only games. If you go to our site, uh, there are some iOS only games. But it, uh, eventually, they will come to other platforms as well, because it's just the lost opportunity. There are, might be some technical problems or some political issues uh, why their games are not coming to other platforms. I could not comment on that. But it's not that obligatory to have it. Mm, we have some internal titles that do really well just on a single platform. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
Uh, do you use uh, your own written framework or do you use any like third-party framework? So with so many teams spread across uh, Eastern Europe, uh, we have a lot of teams using different technologies. Personally, in Latvia, we have our own C++ in-house framework. Uh, we use a lot of Unity 3D uh, across different products like Tank Domination and this uh, uh, great run 3D running game is using Unity 3D. So we're using a lot of te different technology. So it's not like each of the teams is constrained by something. We've got a lot of freedom out there. Uh, another question. Uh, do you believe in better versions in gaming? Because it's kind of popular tendency in apps, but in gaming I didn't see it. So we, we launch fully polished games out there. Uh, Sometimes we start from Android just to validate the idea because uh, Android is much easier to iterate. If you upload an app to App Store, it takes five, three, seven days every time to get a new build out. If you launch an Android, you could iterate really quickly. You upload a build, see if something doesn't work or if you could improve something and change it and upload and upload. And after a few dozen iterations, you will get a really great polished game with no bugs, with no things. So basically, a lot of times Android for us is a beta platform, but most of the times we launch on a straight on iOS, fully polished game, and we would spend months and months with internal QA trying to make super perfect polished game that would fit all the players. Because we know the price if you launch the game, if uh, uh, we enable cross-promotion across our other games. And, and if it doesn't work good, we, will, we have just made a few hundred thousand players download the game that doesn't work or works badly. So this is the price of failure. So we, we, we tend not to do that. Thank you.